Hey, it is me. Welcome. So, um, yes, I'm going to do a video today. It's been a while. I know I said I'd quit YouTube. I decided to come back. A woman's prerogative, I suppose. So I don't know if anybody's actually seen the recent upload from Narc Free Formula. She has had a little chat with a lady called Sean. Now, Sean is the biological mother of a man on YouTube called David DeMars. Now, David DeMars is a narcissistic support life coach who I've had a few problems with in the past. You may all know that by now. I won't repeat myself. And I wanted to put this video together and I wanted to kind of go back because I know a lot of people might judge Sean um, because she's the mother of somebody who's done something wrong and she's come on the internet to talk about it. Now, a lot of people might think, no, that's not right. Family things should be kept family things. But I think what it was, let me tell you what happened. Obviously, when when Sean was 14, she got pregnant. Let's not judge her here because we don't know the ins and outs of what we would do. She had a baby. She called it David. And she put that child up for adoption because at the time, whatever the reason, Sean couldn't take care of David. But 50 years later, 53, whatever, David found Sean through ancestry. And Sean was elated. Sean expected this lovely man to perhaps have grown up into a strapping, good guy, good job, maybe a family. In the 50 years that Sean wasn't with David, David had his own life. David did things, he lived his life. He turned into a man that perhaps wasn't what she expected. See, when they talked for two years before they met and he came and stayed at her house for about six months, they got on really well. And I think when you're talking on the phone, you can present your way in a certain way so that people perceive you in a certain way and you can keep it up. But what I think when you're living with somebody, it's very, very hard to keep that pretense up. Now, when David turned up to meet Sean, Sean had no idea who, who David was apart from her biological son. She had no preconceived ideas except perhaps he's a good guy and he's a, she can't wait to meet this person. She felt bad, she felt sorry, she felt guilty that she left him when he was born and she thought perhaps she could make it up. David, I suppose you could say if I was a mother and I'm not, was a complete, I don't know if a let down is the word. See, I often think, and maybe Sean thinks this as well, would he be the same person if she hadn't passed him on to someone else, if she hadn't put him up for adoption? Would he be the same person? Is it nature or nurture? Now, I'm not blaming David's adoptive parents for the way David turned out, because they tried. Sean spoke to them. And they tried their best to keep David on the straight and narrow. And I think at one point they even put him in a mental institute because he was a very, very bad, hard to handle person. David, when he was with Sean, acted up. Sean saw who David was. See, David was um, a stranger. David was a man that she'd never met which I think if you think about it, why would you let a man into your house that you've never met in your life and stay with you? The fact that it was her biological son, that kind of blanketed, blanketed, blanked out all the things that might concern you about having a stranger in your house. The fact that David was her son give her confidence that he was okay. She didn't know about his past at that point. She hadn't watched any of my YouTube videos. 
anybody's YouTube videos on David. She hadn't seen what David had done in the past to his ex-girlfriend. She didn't know anything about the Mexico meetup where he was very sexually inappropriate with a victim who'd gone there to meet them. She never knew anything. But while he was there, she learned so much. David started talking about me and saying that I was his stalker and <laughs> telling all these lies. So she started looking into the videos. She started to watch my videos. And I think she came to the conclusion and thought, well, this lady's got proof. This lady seems she's talking sense. This lady seems to, you know, have all the proof and evidence of David's abuse to her. David would talk about his ex-clients or his clients, call them crazy. He would say and he would laugh about them. He would tell her all about them. Confidentiality of his clients was nil. David would get drunk, get angry, throw things. He would do drugs continuously from morning to night, apparently. And this is the person that she never, ever, ever expected. Things got worse when he ended up as this video that I will show a clipped version at the end of this little chat. <sighs> he started talking about wanting relationships with, firstly, Carly, his half-sister. He started doing things that were out of the ordinary, lying naked on the bed so that she would view him when she walked past, saying things like, we could have a relationship, we weren't brought up together, we've got no ties, and we're close in age, we could have a relationship. These red flags started to bother Sean. What more started to bother Sean is the way that he would talk about me. He would say that he wanted to get me off YouTube. He wanted to ruin my life. And at one point he threatened that he wanted to kill me and have me killed. These are the things that Sean found out about this man who is only named as her son through the biological birth <laughs> and she realised that this person was not who she hoped that he was the 50 years that he had been without her he got baggage and it seemed he had personality disorders and she knew what he was doing to his clients she started to watch my videos and Narc Free Formula's videos she started to look into things and see how bad and how dangerous David actually was and what he was actually doing, not only to me, but to others, what he'd done to people. David left in the end after six months of making her life hell. This person that she thought was going to be a reunion of mother and son and she was going to make friends, make up for what she'd done for lost time. Perhaps he was making up with her so he could hurt her for perhaps leaving him, perhaps ruining his life and making him the person that he is today. He got the police out on her, he packed up, he left. He did all sorts of things to her and I'll link her channel below and if you wanna see what he did, you can watch that. But the things that he was doing to his customers and his clients and the things that she found out from watching my channel she felt guilty that this man had done all this stuff and she was the only one that really could come out and say something. Now, this is to the point of, should mothers shop their sons? Now, we know many mothers shop their sons for anything, whether it's knife crime, anything, whether the son comes home, puts his blood-stained clothes into a washing machine, she finds out that he's perhaps attacked somebody. What does she do? She loves his son. She's brought up with his son. She's got mother and son relationship going on for years. She shops him because she knows that someone's unsafe. She knows that he's done something bad. So if people are going to judge Sean for perhaps coming onto YouTube and doing a video about his intent to want sexual relationships with her, his illegal intent, his immoral intent, his disgusting intent, his disrespectful intent, 
to want to have a relationship with his own mother and sister and lay naked and upset her and have her lock her door at night because she's worried and doesn't know who this man is that's living with her. And she knows he's a life coach with this dark passenger and dark past and mind the way he has it. Would she really want that kind of person to look after other people who are vulnerable, mentally ill, have been through a sexual abuse, have been through mental abuse? See, I know that that type of person should not be working with vulnerable minds. And she knew that as well. Which is why she got in touch with me and Freedom and we did those videos. Now it took Sean two years to come forth. Two years to show Freedom this text. And Freedom made the video. She had to think long and hard. If he wasn't a life coach, I think she probably would have left it. But a life coach who perhaps you would like to call a pervert, who is into sexual deviancy, voyeurism, incest. Anybody out there, would you want that type of man giving you coaching over the internet? Would you like to pay that man $100 to tell you what he interprets life should be, how he thinks that you should be doing stuff? A man with such a dark past giving you advice on your boundaries, on your sexual abuse, on your family relationships, on your boundaries, when this man hasn't got any. So yeah, she did, she came forth and she showed that text to Freedom and the video came out. And I will be linking it underneath here, but I will be showing you parts of it when I finish chatting. So try not to judge people. Sean did the right thing. David's sick. I know he's sick because I've had David for the last seven years. I've seen and heard and witnessed the things that David has done to try and silence me. It's not healthy. And I think after she saw that, she realised who she was living with. So now obviously their relationship is over. David has been slandering and smear campaigning his own mother to try and keep her quiet. But you see, when someone leaves crumbs of toxicity and poison and disgusting things in, in their past and does things in their past that David has done, abusing his ex-girlfriend that is still alive and not dead, as David says, ghosting people, stealing their money, threatening to put out all their details if they don't shut up and leave him alone. Apparently one of his clients was a thorn in his side. When he ghosts you, when David dates his clients and then when he's finished with them, calls them psychopaths. Vulnerable people who've gone to him for support. He love bombs them, he dates them, he dumps them and then he calls them a psychopath. Like the very person who did that to them in the first place that then brought them to David, he repeats the same pattern. People don't speak up nowadays because of the vulnerable position they're in. Perhaps they are at their lowest. They're in a relationship that they can't get out of. They need help, they're suicidal. And the fact that David pushed a girl to trying to take her own life to the point she had brain damage because she watched David's borderline personality disorders and how he ripped people with that illness, personality disorder apart. He shamed them, he victim shamed them. And she tried to take her life because he, she watched David's video. And you know what David said about that too, Sean? She was fucking crazy anyway, nothing to do with me. This type of man should not be in charge of people's health, mental health and lives and finance by charging them $100 every time he wants to speak to them. So I wanted to put this video out there because I know there will be a lot of people out there that will be frowning upon Sean for shopping her son over this incest thing. 
But the concern isn't about him because he doesn't have any concern for anybody. The concern is for his patients, his customers, his clients, whatever you want to call them. And I want people to be aware that narcissists in this community thrive off this community because people with narcissism, because people who've been through narcissist relationships need help and they go to the coach who is actually narcissist themselves. It's a sad world. And that's why I do my videos. So I'm going to leave it there. Can I say one more thing? David DeMars, very person who supported Alan Vinicom, the armchair detective. The armchair detective abused and hurt the Rusek family, made money from them, was immoral, corrupt, scamming, conned. And David supported him. David also supported Bam Bam's World, another woman who abused, attacked, terrorised people on YouTube until she got removed. The same as Alan got removed for violations of policy, abuse, harassment. She threatened. She threatened me many times to come and beat me up. She also pushed someone to suicide and said she would do it again. Now, David is against suicide. David set up a petition to stop abuse that could lead to, lead to suicide. <laughs> and here it is, supporting the two people that are pushing people to suicide. That I find ironic that David supports the two people on YouTube. <sighs> so David supports the two people on YouTube that do the disgusting things that are everything that David stands against. Immoral. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I'll play that little bit of video now. Videos, links underneath this. Please support Sean. She's been through a lot and she's only trying to help people who are actually vulnerable. So today's special guest is David Mars biological mother, Sean Whitman. Uh, Sean is here to share some shocking evidence about David Mars infatuation and obsession with incest. One night after when David... Demars was living with me. I get this text from David and he says to me, are you still awake? And I said, I just saw this. Where are you? And he goes on to say, here, you sexy motherfucker. I'm always here. And I was like, totally shocked, totally shocked. I was like, what? I was really freaked out. I locked my bedroom door. I didn't answer. And I just was trying to think all night how, what I was, was going to deal with it. Yeah. David Mars has a YouTube channel. He's done like a two-day online course and is working out as a narcissistic abuse life coach. Um, David Mars has multiple allegations being made against him from women, including his former girlfriends, his friends, clients, viewers of the channel, and his own biological family. Serious allegations, mind you. Sexual assault, assault and battery, kidnapping, misconduct, theft, fraud, and a whole range of inappropriate behaviours, including stalking, online harassment, bullying, ghosting clients, refusing to uh, refund their money, and more. So, and now this. That was the reason I decided to do the video. And he yeah. manipulates them. It's their most vulnerable time. They're coming to him for coaching because they have emotional issues. And he takes advantage of them, manipulates them, you know, wants them to be his girlfriend. And then when they dump him, he says all these ugly things about him. I mean, I've heard him. Psychopath, narcissist, all these things he says horrible after they've done it. He also talked about his adoptive mother. And, you know, I talked to his adoptive parents many times. They told me that he, they were aware of his accusations. Um, we discussed your daughter, Carly, so David's half-sister. So I looked it up. It's genetic sexual attraction. And he had discussed that with Carly 
feeling sexual, emotional, romantic feelings and love between close relatives such as siblings, first and second cousins or a parent and offspring who meet for the first time as adults. But he became obsessed with her and she's his half-sister. He's a violent person. He has a horrible temper. I saw it here many times. He didn't want to say anything or confront him with it because I was afraid. He was lying naked in his room with the door open. See, that kind of ties in, in my mind, to um it's obviously like I said, it's about you know voyeurisms the fact that we could be in a relationship because we are not bonded because i didn't raise him a genetic sexual attraction that he was obsessed with what is he talking about it's like why is he saying that to me you know he doesn't really know me it's so inappropriate and it just ties into he has no no boundaries and he obviously um i mean <laughs> It's huge to overlook the fact that you are his biological mother. You gave birth yeah. to him. What is he thinking? You know, because uh, you know, I was young, and he'd bring that up too. It's, it's a part of grooming. And that's what he does with his clients. He grooms them, then he has relationships with them. Also, because, well, we suspect he's a narcissist, but because narcissists have got this really, like they have this fascination with taboo sex, kind of playing these weird sexual games with his own mother, and half sister too. Like, uh, uh, if he, if somebody was gay, you know, between gays, between men, uh, and you know, some stories like that, and it was or threesomes, or you know, just it was just like he would talk about it a lot. You know, he's testing you essentially, like I say, to see mm -hmm. what your reaction is going to be. After he left, and I had guilt about exposing my family to him and but you know i didn't know he was going to be like behave like that i told him that my granddaughter would not be coming over to the house anymore and so i told him that i didn't tell him the real reason that she was not going to be coming over and he immediately after that he got mad and packed his shit up and he was gone within a day he manipulated his way into my home too you know he manipulated i felt sorry for him i felt and i'm just like that and you know, and he, he just manipulated his way here. And his dad, his adoptive dad, told me he did the same thing to his adoptive mother. Yeah, I think he's a serial kind of, um, you know, we joke about it, but um, hobosexual. You know, he, he will have sex for a place to stay, I think. Have relationships with women for a place to stay. And, you know, he's very, you know, he, he look, I think he's a narcissist. You think he's a narcissist. Um, we're not psychologists. Definitely. Yeah, but we know him well enough to know that um, he's throwing up a huge amount of red flags when it comes to the narcissism. He kind of manipulates women, takes advantage of them, and then when they try and escape him, he'll smear their reputation, which he has done with you. Life coaching is an unregulated industry, and David DeMars is unstable. He's a fraud. He should never be around any you know vulnerable women who are overcoming narcissistic abuse. Um, and he needs to be removed from YouTube, in my opinion. He only cares about the money. He doesn't care. He, tra he talks horrible horrible about his clients. There's no confidentiality with him. He's totally unstable. People need to realize, you know, that, I mean, keep an open mind. I don't, I have no reason to say any of this stuff. And I'm showing you the text that came from him. There is so much evidence and, you know, just, just being really logical. If people want to look at this situation and say, oh, it's his bio mom versus David Demars, well, it's not actually, because it's your story aligns with what Val says with what his ex-clients say, his ex-girlfriends say, you know, his former friends say. So your story actually aligns. David DeMars is out there on his own calling everyone a narcissist, narcissist. But what is possible is that David DeMars is a narcissist. Um, and having a channel on narcissist abuse is perfect for a narcissist because then they get to source all of these victims. So it's the perfect kind of hunting ground for a narcissist. Um, uh, and David actually is highly inappropriate um, and dangerous. Yes. So I'm glad that you came forward, Sean. So thank you. I know it takes a lot of uh, courage and bravery. Um, and you know that some people from David Mars, like this coaching channel, with some of these flying monkeys, they'll come down and they're going to harass you in the comments. But all we can say to them is, you know, actually keep an open mind. Just hopefully this will be yet another nail in the coffin of David Mars' um, fraudulent grifting career on YouTube. Okay. Nice to talk to you, and I'll talk to you again sometime soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.